Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Andy here with the Deplorable General again, and I wanted to bring you uh, some interesting information that I found out today with rising tensions across the world between uh, the United States and Russia, United States and China, United States and North Korea. Um, we haven't had a lot of tension that, uh, that's been in the news about the United States and Iran, but it's been there. Um, and with new um, alliances made between countries like uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia and Russia, um, I think that it's as more likely than ever, uh, actually, that we have a nuclear exchange, right? As we militarily uh, have major, large global forces bumping heads, um, it comes to a point where somebody is going to lose, and when you are in the upper echelons of military power, um, it, you have a lot more to lose, and therefore things like a nuclear war become more likely. No, I'm not saying, I'm not chicken little, I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm just saying it's becoming more likely. The probability is higher than what it ever has been in the past. I think even compared to uh, what it was during the Cold War, I think that the uh, capabilities and the, the possibility uh, during the Cold War was largely overstated. I really think that um, that the capability, probability, possibility of it happening today is a lot higher than it was during the Cold War. That being said, we are going to dive into a couple of documents here. And we're going to start with this. Okay, let me pop this up here. All right. So what we have here is the nuclear war plan, okay? Um, this was created by the Natural Resources Defense Council in 2001. So some of this information has changed, but a lot of it has remained the same. Uh, this is a 208-page document that I will actually uh, put a link to in the description of this video so you can review it yourself. There's a lot of really good information in here. Um, as you can see, we go down to the table of contents, um, fighting real nuclear wars, the results, what we recommend, an overview, um, you dive down into the single integrated operational plan and U.S. nuclear forces. Um, the nuclear war simulation model. This is where a lot of your data is when it comes down to like what what we should expect. Um, attacking Russia's nuclear forces. So if this is the, this takes the position that we're at war with Russia, and um, our counteroffensive uh, to Russia, how we would launch that and then some of the recommendations and the appendices. And so really interesting reading material if, uh, if you are bored or are looking for something to sit behind the toilet to, to read while you're taking your uh, morning, well, yeah, you get the point. This is great for that, um, if you're into this kind of stuff, right? But if you're not, that's why I'm bringing this to you, okay? So I'm gonna, we're gonna look at a couple of articles Close some of these pop-up ads. This is from the Independent. This is the map of, uh, and, and you can see not all this stuff, th this is, is relatively recent, but not all of these are. Some of these are over the past couple of years, but I think that they all kind of paint a good picture. So the map of U.S. claims to show areas most at risk of being targeted in a nuclear war. Um, and so this, a lot of the maps and things come from, uh, from that report that I just showed you. Um, so as you scroll down, it shows you the actual map, okay? Um, this map was actually issued, uh, in 2015 by CBS, and let's see if we can zoom in on it here at all. Yeah, we can zoom in a little bit here. Um, and... What you can see here is um, if there is a 500 uh, warhead attack, or if there is a um, 2,000, I think, 
warhead attack. And so the black dots are the, the, the larger attack, and the tr purple triangles are the smaller attack. And um, I think, let's see if I can... Yeah, that's all right. So, um, but you can see here, if you live anywhere on the East Coast, right, all the way from uh, Virginia up to New York, um, and up, up to Maine, really, um, it is, you're screwed, right? A lot of these triangles overlap with each other, all up here in Chicago, Illinois, all of your major cities have triangles uh, around them. And um, we're going to look at what that means, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that, like, you're, you know, if you live in that city per se, you're, you're, you're done for. Uh, but we're going to look at that. But this, this just map is a good map that kind of just shows um, what some expected target areas might be. So let's close out the map. Okay. So, this is the article from 2015. You can check that out. That's from CBS. But then we're going to jump over here into, this is from the Survival Guide. And this is U.S. nuclear target list and the safest locations to consider. And this is updated in 2021. So this is updated last year with the start of the Russia conflict. So saying that uh, these are the areas that you want to avoid. Overpopulated areas, military bases, uh, depots for military ammunition, states with major industries that can contribute to economic decline if destroyed by nuclear attacks, and states with significant infrastructure facilities such as water reservoirs, power plants, and information technology systems. And this is, uh, there are several locations in the U.S. listed on the nuclear target map as potential zones for nuclear strikes, and they include Fort Ritchie in Maryland, Camp David, and Pentagon. So these two, uh, Fort Ritchie and Camp David, are like right next to each other. So you get one, you get all of them. Um, but also there is Site R or Raven Rock, which is, um, it's part of the government's continuity of government plan. Basically, um, your, your government leaders should there be an imminent attack, that is where they would be sent to. It is a massive underground bunker system that is uh, to serve as kind of the, the new Pentagon should the U.S. infrastructure be taken out. And so that is there with Camp David. That's there. That's why Fort Ritchie is, um, is targeted because Fort Ritchie is actually now defunct. It's, it's no longer a, a military base. It's actually like privately owned. Uh, so the actual target there is Site R. Uh, so Camp David, Pentagon, um, naval, uh, naval radio station. So this is Jim Creek, and, and this is in Washington. Uh, we have targets is Washington, D.C., San Francisco, Los Angeles, Houston, New York. So as you can imagine, a lot of your major cities. Naval Station Norfolk, the largest Navy base in the world um, in Virginia. And uh, as you can see here, it houses more than 150,000 personnel. So our, uh, most of our Navy on the Atlantic side comes from here. And so if, if that were targeted and destroyed, it would be a huge loss. And a lot of people don't know, and a lot of your, uh, a lot of your ground pounders might not agree with this, but uh, it, our Navy is where our military strength comes from. It's the force that we're able to move around um, most freely throughout the world. And, uh, and so our Navy is where we get most of our strength from. Um, and so you take, out, you take out Norfolk and it's a huge hit. San Diego, same thing. That's our West, our West Coast fleet. That's our Pacific fleet. Uh, also very large. We have Seattle, Washington, another naval base. Los Alamos. This is, uh, this is like Area 51. Basically, um, it, it, it's another section um, there, you know, in New Mexico, relatively close to like what we know as Area 51, San Antonio, Fort Bragg, 
That's where special forces train from, and that's where they're stationed out of. Your uh, Army Rangers in uh, Kansas City, National Security Campus, Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado Springs. And so that's your military communication center, another very large underground bunker system um, that is specifically designed for communications. Um, and you can see the list goes on and on and on for different reasons. Now talk to the safest places from a nuclear attack. And so basically, uh, away from those places, right? States which do not have nuclear power plants is Northern California, West Virginia, Minnesota, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Illinois, Rhode Island, Minnesota are considered safer because um, it is believed that those nuclear power plants would be strong targets. Uh, l lesser populated areas, of course, are not going to be huge targets, and so that's something to consider. Uh, most of us can't pick up and move, so take it for what you will. Um, the next article we have over here is uh, U.S. Nuclear Target Map, Most Safe and Unsafe Areas. So, uh, again, it talks about how there's a threat. The most safe areas in the U.S. in a nuclear war include the upper Midwest, Maine, West Texas, and multiple small pockets, usually in areas that don't have large populations. We've talked about that. Uh, the most unsafe areas includes most of the East Coast and anywhere near a major city. We talked about that as well. And so this map was created by the government, and it just shows um, the red zones are the least safe, the blue zones are the most safe. As you can see, most of the East Coast here, and most of, of this area, I mean, a, a lot of the country is, is considered not safe. West Texas is a huge area of, of safety. And then pretty much in this corridor right here uh, is, is the, the biggest concentration of, of where, which makes sense, right? Because we have huge land masses on either side and huge population centers on either side. So it makes sense that these are your, um, your areas that are possible or probable targets. Again, another list here, other major cities that could become targets uh, for nuclear attack, Miami, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, Honolulu. Um, so this article, oh, here we go. Uh, which U.S. cities are the lowest priority targets? And so some of the cities with lower likelihood... Um, since large-scale nuclear attack may trigger earthquakes, it's recommended to avoid zones that are prone to seismic activity. Places with a lower likelihood of earthquakes include eastern Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, Michigan, Nebraska, and Kansas. Here's a map of, uh, that shows potential fallout effects of a full-scale nuclear exchange. Special thanks to Martin Varjic of Haley Con Maps for making this information part of the public domain. And... So what you can see here is um, your major uh, wildfires and then um, severe fallout and then all the way down here is minimal fallout. And so as you see, this whole area of the East Coast, basically everything east of the Mississippi except for this little swath of land here, which is, I guess, Georgia, um, you have risk of fallout, and that's something to consider, right? Because the I think the largest damage, as we'll see in this next uh, tab over here, um, the the biggest risk is going to be from fallout, not from the actual blast itself, unless you live right next to a a target. Um, and so there are ways to prepare yourself against fallout. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Maybe we'll talk about it in another video. If that's something that you're interested in, you want to know how we can protect ourselves against fallout in case of a nuclear attack, let me know down in the comments, and I will make another video where we dive into some of that and um, come up with some ways for you to defend yourselves, your families, and whatnot against that fallout. But that is the biggest threat, okay? And you can see here in this map, the, uh, the West Coast, not so much. Now, here's one of the things that I want you to think about. The, and the reason why that is, is if you look at the fallout, you see how it all kind of slants this way. Well, that's because um, this, it, these are the wind patterns in the jet stream um, across the United States. They typically blow from west to east. And so um, that's why even 
stuff that happens over here eventually is going to flow over here to, to, to those of us over here on the East Coast. Something to think about. Um, haven't checked out this page. You can check out the Nuclear Preparedness page on this link right here. Um, this is survivalfreedom.com if you're interested. Again, I'll put links to all of these in the description. And it says the actual blast radius of modern nuclear devices is a complicated issue. A nuclear device poses a number of different threats, all of which present other challenges to people intending to survive a nuclear detonation. The safest distance from a nuclear explosion is over 53 miles. Uh, a one megaton bomb could potentially blind people up to uh, 52.8 miles away. The heat from such a bomb will cause third degree burns up to five miles away. Uh, the shock wave created by the detonation could produce 180 tons of force within um, 3.7 mile radius. The detonation itself will cause blinding light and searing heat within the immediate area of the bomb. Now, all of that is uh, going to be completely relevant to the type and the size of bomb that is used. Here are Here's a, a list of 12 safe places to live in the world in case of a nuclear attack. Number one on the list is Moscow, Russia. You wouldn't think so, right? But um, Moscow has a incredible nuclear defense system. Um, they have really defended on. Uh, they've really focused on defending uh, Moscow um, since it is so close to Europe. Uh, they they claim to have enough underground bunkers to support a hundred percent of their population. I'm sure that is an overstatement. But even if they have enough to uh, house 10% of their population is still more than the United States. The United States has zero. So the only way that we can be uh, sure that we are uh, safe from nuclear attacks is to, to live in areas that are going to be safer because our government doesn't think that it's necessary to create bunkers for us as the citizens, only themselves, as we mentioned for these other massive underground bunker facilities that our government has built. They uh, they have completely neglected us, the people, but in, in, in Russia, they have not. They have built bunkers, public bunkers, and if you go to Moscow, you'll see these look like subway stations, and they're actually bunkers where they have these yellow stick figure people running, it looks like, um, on, and, and that's what they are. So, uh, Russia... Moscow, Russia is number one. Billings, Montana, of course, is because it's out in the middle of nowhere. It also has an EPA uh, radiation air monitor um, located there, which is uh, it's going to let you know if you're safe from radiation fallout. We go down. We have Casper, Wyoming. Same thing. We have a lot of these is because of the um, the low the uh, less populated nature of these areas. Uh, there is also a EPA radiation air monitor location there as well. Rapid City, South Dakota. Pierre, South Dakota. South Dakota is a big one. Here's Bismarck, North Dakota. There's that map again. Boise, Idaho. It's also an EPA radiation air monitor location. Kearney, Nebraska. Dodge City, Kansas. Corvallis, Oregon. Eureka, California. Kind of looks like the Sahara Desert. El Paso, Texas. So those are your 12 cities. Um, links will be in the description. You can read a little bit more into that. I think it's very interesting. Last thing that we are going to touch on here is um, this is the nuke map. Okay, This is a very um, interesting and informative uh, website. And so what you're able to do is you're able to, to select a location. Okay, And so we're going to select, uh, let's select, Baltimore. Okay, we're going to go to Baltimore. And then um, you're going to go on this drop down here, and let's see, like the smallest, the Davy Crockett is the smallest U.S. bomb produced. It's a 20 ton. And we're going to click detonate. It's going to show you what 
what that detonation looks like as far as the damage that it's going to cause. And so if, if it was detonated right in the heart of Baltimore, you're looking at like, what, 15 city blocks or so. This is a small, very, very small yield weapon. This is what they would consider to be like a tactical nuke, battlefield nuke. Okay, but let's keep moving up a little bit. So, uh, crude nuclear terrorist terrorist weapon, 100 tons, bam. And what do we have here? We can zoom out and we can see most of the city of Baltimore still exists right at that point. Now let's jump up a little bit. Um, so the North Korean weapon tested in 2013. It's a, a 10 kiloton. I don't know what's going on with my map here. Let me see if I can refresh this. All right, back to Baltimore. We go to uh, 10 kilotons and, all right, again, so now the blast radius is not uh, like terrible, but now, we have um, we have a potential for moderate blast damage right here, right? And so now that's more of the city of Baltimore. It's actually a pretty good a pretty good chunk of the city of Baltimore. And it's just North Korea. Okay, let's look at the Hiroshima bomb. You can see kind of just a little bit more, but I mean, you know, at that point, most of Baltimore has been ravaged. Um, the Nagasaki bomb, let's take a look at that one, just a little bit, a little bit bigger. Here is the largest Pakistani nuke. Again, Baltimore City is gone at that point. Uh, blast damage out to Baltimore County. Then let's jump down here to uh, North Korean test in 2017. That's 150 kilotons, maybe. And we can see, like, I, I, the point that I'm getting at here is you can see, depending on what's used, is going to decide the extent of the damage, right, and, and what you should expect. Um, let's scroll down. That's not even... Let's look at the largest USSR bomb. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so Baltimore is gone. DC is gone. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no, so this is thermal radiation. So these people in here, you're, you're gonna be alive, probably, but, uh, but not for long. So you have a month, I think. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They can cause severe scarring, uh, let's see, 100% pro uh, probability of third degree burns at this yield. So third degree burns, you know, for everybody in this massive area right here. Terrible. Uh, light blast damage a little bit farther out. And so uh, we live up here in this York area. And uh, you can see that biggest bomb is detonated in Baltimore and, you know, I'm getting burned way up here, which is crazy. Now, I don't think there's a lot of these, so I, I don't think that that's the biggest risk. I think that, uh, especially with the warheads and stuff that they have, they're going to be going for uh, getting the most out in the smallest packages. And so I don't think it's something necessarily to be super worried about, but... Let's see, this is a uh, highest killed ICBM US deployed. Let's see this one. Yeah, so I, if I were to guess, I'm not an expert on nuclear, uh, nuclear weapons and even nuclear doctrine. Here's, uh, here's the Topol SS-25 currently in Russian arsenal. So you see it's still pretty substantial, right? But if I had to guess, this is probably what is most likely to be used. And, um, 
you know, those cities that I mentioned are, are the ones that we have to worry about. Um, you can click on here to see casualties. Wow. So if this particular bomb were to hit Baltimore City, estimated fatalities 313,370, estimated injuries 522,010. Uh, pretty, pretty devastating, as you can imagine. So, like I said, folks, I am not trying to to uh, to make this video to scare you in any way, shape, or form. I just think that we have a scenario um, currently where uh, we have a, a higher probability of this kind of stuff happening. And so, uh, that being said, I think that it is prudent of us to keep in mind that this is happening and things that we can do about it. Like I said, if you are interested in me making a video on what you should do if we were attacked uh, by uh, nuclear weapons, let me know down in the comments. I would love to make a video on that. I have a lot of information on that and have, uh, have done a lot of preparation myself for that. So, uh, do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Deplorable General, over and out.